Good morning, everybody. Here is the live streaming on Facebook. We, uh, I'm going to save this and try to put this on uh, YouTube later. Full moon or not, and it's snowing outside, hopefully this will work better. Uh, let me see here. There you go. I'm going to post a list of, I've already posted a list of supplies that you'll need on uh, Facebook. You can download it from my, uh, from my page. And here's a list of, or here's a few things you can do with, um, with copper. These are some of the things I've done in, in the past and, and lately. They make wonderful ornaments for your wood turnings or other crafts. And so there's a steampunk coffee maker. There's my friend Janice. And there's a medallion I made. This is the inside of the copper bowl, a little box. The tools that I use to make my domes and cut my copper uh, discs. And... So yeah, so let's get started. A few things you should be aware of when working with copper etching is you're going to be working with a lot of uh, nasty chemicals. They stink, they send off fumes, you should be wearing goggles and gloves when using this product. Uh, if you don't have access to ferric chloride, I've also used a combination of muriac acid and um, hydrogen peroxide 3% uh, in the past. Um, I can post later what the uh, ratio is for, for mixing. So I've got here is, um, I've got a few different projects or a, a few medallions put in at different times of the process. So I've cut myself a disc of copper, 20, gra uh, 20 gauge copper. And what we're gonna start with is taking the finish off of your platter or after your disc. They usually put a finish on their copper when I buy it and so you take the finish off trying to make sure you don't get too much of your uh, oils from your fingers on it and so there. So now I've scratched off the the finish on it and what you're going to do next is going to take some stamps with a stays on ink pad and uh, stamp it up. So here I've got some different stamps that I can use, rubber stamps. Uh, I've done this one. I really like the dragonfly. Uh, there's quite a variety of them. Also, if you want to freehand your drawings, get a hold of a Sharpie. It makes a great resist for your etching. So if you can draw on your own, whatever it is that you want to do. Um, so yeah, so I've got a few of them started here. And I used to hate having to put, and before I do, before I put it in the etching, I dome them. And so for this, I use a wonderful little machine here, a little metal Disc. If you can't access one of these to make your domes, you can make them out of a nice hard wood and um, turn your uh, mallet here and you've got some nice domes of different shapes. It's all up to you. Uh, so now I've got, I, I couldn't stand having to dish for or search with my tweezers for one of these. And then I remembered I've got this, uh, whatchamacallit, Tupperware thingy that has this in it. And all I have to do now is lift it to see if my etching has taken shape. So here I've got a few of them. Before you put it in your etching, oops, let me find my masking tape. Before you put it in your etchings, I cover the back with masking tape so that none of the etching fluid, the ferric chloride, can reach it. Because the process of etching is actually eating away at the copper. And so it'll make it just a tad too thin sometimes. And it could actually eat it right through if you wait too long in your, uh, in your piece. 
So here I've got one that I've already set up and did a few etchings with the, um, or did some designing with the stamp and with a Sharpie. And so it's a nice little dollar, what do you call it, sand dollar. So here I'm going to put the masking tape on it, making sure that it's sealed very well or as much, even if you get a little bit of uh, ferric chloride in it, it won't be so bad, but it's much nicer if you can cover it up. So now I'll place it in my ferric chloride design up here let me turn this around design up and then dish it down into the ferric chloride making sure that it's all covered so now you'll leave this for about oh check it every 10 minutes or so it's sometimes depending on how old your ferric chloride is it can take up to half an hour 45 minutes before you get a good etching you don't want to etch it too long so now I've got while I'm doing that piece here I've got one that I've already taken out and what you're going to do with this it's going to it's going to come out uh, kind of a blackish or whatever in order to stop the process of etching I use a solution in my crock pot of water with one tablespoon of Sparex number two which I get at the jewelry supply store I've got it heated up you can't really see from there but I've got it heated up and I'm going to grab my tweezers and when I've got it out of the um, etching fluid I'm going to mix it or clean it off in uh, some water and then dunk it into the crock pot now of uh, Sparex. The Sparex what it does is it pickles it so it takes it away any impurities you might have and then dry it off and now that I've got it in the crock pot it's all cleaned off I've taken most of the the scum that you get in the back whatever with a steel wool by just lightly rubbing you don't want to rub too much because you don't want to take away from the sharpness of the design and so now I'm going to antique it with liver of sulfur so I've got my piece here and I'm going to grab some liver of sulfur you just need a little bit here I've heated the water up. There's a little chunk. I've heat and it stinks. It smells like sulfur. But I've heated the water up and now I'm going to dissolve it in my hot water or warm water. And you know, once it doesn't take long to dissolve. So you can already start putting your piece in. So now I've got my piece. I'm going to dunk it in the liver of sulfur. You can leave it there. And as you can see, it's starting to blacken already. So leave it there until you can swish the water around. It kind of speeds it up a little bit. There. I really like the look of the antique copper. It seems to bring out the details even more. So now I've got now you can see it's kind of gotten black and everything else so now I'm going to rinse that off in the water Oop, drop it rinse that off I gotta get myself some better pliers so rinse that off and move that liver of sulfur because it really does stink and take a paper towel and damp it take some of that moisture off and see how well it's holding so now I can take away some of this black so I'm just now with this piece I had not put the backing on the on it so it got really kind of thin so now I've got this piece that's all blackened up what I can do is I can take my jewelers it's a very soft brass brush brush and I'm just gonna start shining that up and it just comes out beautifully so as you can see it's taken away some of the black 
and if you want it a little darker you can always put it back into your uh, liver of sulfur solution let's see here oh it's coming it's coming oh and this just shines it right up and if you want to take some of that coloring off there are other ways of coloring too I've used a torch a propane torch to color the copper different colors you get some beautiful colors that come out of it um, but I like I really like this antique finish now if you're not happy or you've got too much of that black is still on there you can use your steel wool to take away just the top of your design so it shows up more so here I'm gonna just lightly touch the design and you can use this instead of the brush it won't shine it up as nice as the brush will but it will bring out more of the design though so here just to get some of that texturing up and there you have it now uh, we've got some lighting happening here and this is how you end up and if you're not happy with the etching if you want it a little deeper you can always keep doing the process over again until you get a really nice etch on your piece so here's a B that I've done that we started yesterday and it's unfortunate you got this light Let's see if I can get that anyway you can see it from the pictures once I post them and you've got a nice little medallion now you want to seal this so that it doesn't keep antiquing over time if you like the look of it right now I usually put a very light spray of lacquer on it and so yeah this this is what you there you get a better picture of it and you've got some nice etching done so there you go this was your copper DIY on etching I hope you enjoy it I would love to see your work if you can Show me some pictures later, send them to me either Messenger or post them up on Facebook. I'll be watching for them. In the meantime, have yourself a great day. We've got a bit of a snow blizzard starting here, and so I'm just going to go get ready because I've got to go into town today and meet a friend. So catch up with you guys later. Have fun. Bye.